us off with an opening thought or two, and then we'll take questions. Welcome to another rivalry within the conference. Uh, our men are playing the school up north, and today we have the school down south. And we really emphasize what that means within our program. Uh, we've got four freshmen uh, playing a lot of them, and we talked about that every minute of our preparation, uh, what, what that meant to be at home and to play uh, in such a big rivalry game um, against this opponent. But um, credit, you know, my, Miami, any time that uh, both teams are in need of a win, uh, it's going to go down to, uh, it's going to be a hard-fought game for 40 minutes, and, and that was. Uh, I thought our kids did a good job of limiting um, them in the first half. And we were able to extend the lead going into halftime, but uh, we knew they were going to make a, a comeback, and, and they did. And credit our, our kids for staying composed. And there was a couple keys I felt like that secured the win for us. Uh, we now lead the nation in free throw percentage. Uh, we shot 82% today as a team. We got to the line 27 of 33 times. And I think Deborah Hoekstra is going to be the most mad that she missed her two at the very end, or we would have been 29 of 33. So I'm going to have to talk her off the ledge later, later on on Monday. Um, but today I thought we did a good job with low turnovers, and we out-rebounded uh, a team playing predominantly five, five guards. But uh, the, the last key statistic in, in my eyes that really turned the, the tables and gave us a lot of momentum was our bench play. In particular, Kennedy Kirkpatrick came off the bench and had 18 points, uh, earned 26 minutes out of that. And uh, she missed a couple shots. And even that couple couple of those shots, I thought we're still going to go in. Uh, those two, two rimmed out. But uh, we had balanced scoring with four kids in double digit points. And when you're playing seven kids, that's uh, that's that's important. But I really thought whoever could get the 60 today had a had a good chance of earning the victory, and we got to that number first. You mentioned not being home often and what an advantage what being home is. What makes playing at home such an advantage, especially for your team? Look around; it's a crowd. Uh, you could feel the energy. Uh, it just shoot around is different. Uh, I had not realized till reading uh, some of the best game notes in the conference that we were 12 of 15 games on the road, and that's a tough stretch. Granted, you want to build up some character and some other attributes during non-conference, but uh, it's been a tough conference stretch being on the road so much and in conference play, but uh, I really was, was proud of our kids. Uh, they have stayed focused, and they've cir circled remaining home, home dates. It's just uh, you don't get to play at home, at home a lot and this game was uh, we, we were eyeing this game to be back in the Stroh Center in front of almost 2,000 people and I, I told our kids at each practice, at each film session leading into this game, as I said earlier about the rivalry, but also hey, I've, I've gotten multiple emails saying we're proud of you. We're proud of you. Hang in there. Tell the injured kids I'm thinking about them. I'll give them a hug when I see them this, that, and the other, and you could feel that energy, and we needed that today from our fans, and we did that. Um, Coach, there when Miami went on a dry spell in the first half, do you think that that was because of your execution on defense, or because they just couldn't get shots to fall? A combination of both. I mean, we, we did a good job defensively, don't get me wrong, and I thought we um, maintained the ball so they didn't get a whole lot of offensive possessions because they had multiple games where they had double digits um, in the high teens and offensive rebounds. And today they only ended up with, with 11. But they had a couple of good looks that honestly did not fall that they're capable of, of hitting. But I thought we were, were there and made shots contested. And I think that's a big difference versus a contested shot versus an open shot. But uh, we had a lot of momentum and um, late in that second half of the, I mean, the last 10 minutes of the first half. Uh, was was a big difference, but uh, Miami they're extremely long on the wing. I mean every every position we put out there we were smaller, one through five today. And as I said, rebounding has been an Achilles heel for us because of our sides. And I was really proud. Not only did we out rebound them, but we limited a very high offensive rebounding team to to only eleven. If they get more offensive rebounds, it is a, a much closer game. In that run, I mean, you 
you also got some good offense. A lot of it was Kennedy there. I think she had 9 and 17 or something along those numbers. Which was it that was fueling the other? Was it the defense that got the offense rolling or, or that offensive spurt that kind of gave you some defensive? I've used this cliche before, but you know, once one kid feels it and another one's going to feel it and keep, keep shooting, and I thought our kids really ran for that momentum, and um, Kennedy got, got hot. We started running a couple play, plays for her in particular to get to the hoop, and she executed well, and uh, our kids have really adapted to running some new stuff offensively and looking for specific um, driving gaps and specific ways to draw a foul. And that takes some time, and um, things really click today, not only for her, but for, for us in that half. And, and to almost put up 70 points with seven kids, that's, I'm, I'm very ecstatic about that number. Will you talk a little bit about the second half then? It looked, and I'm no coach, but offensively, they were much more aggressive going to the basket. And defensively, that press, and even though it didn't necessarily create turnovers, it shortened shot clock. And, can you talk about dealing with those two factors? Which is fine. If it shortens the shot clock, I would have been fine with multiple shot clock violations. I mean, we're controlling tempo, in, right. that, in my, my opinion, with that, and they're not getting the, the ball. But, I mean, we shot almost 50%, and they shot almost 50%, so you knew it was going to be a high-scoring affair in the second half, mm -hmm. which it was. Um, but they, they stepped up and uh, played with a level. They, they went five guards to match our five guards, I, I felt like in the second half, and Jessica Rupright has been averaging close to 20 minutes, and um, she's one of the, the biggest and post players in, in the league uh, with her size at, at 6'2", and when she gets positioned down low, I mean, you, you, can't, you can't stop that even um, because she does a good job of sealing and getting angles on you on, on the block, but uh, again, I thought they uh, went to more of a dribble drive offense in the second half and uh, got to the foul line more so in the second half than the first half. We, we knew that. They got to the bonus before we did, uh, and I, I anticipated that because they had to create something off the bounce. Will you talk about your young team dealing with the pressure of them cutting back, coming back and a 20-point lead becoming a 10-point lead, and there's still enough time dealing with that pressure? We actually didn't talk about points and cutting it from 20 to 15 to 10. We talked about executing. We picked up a couple play calls that they had done defensively and said, hey, they're going to do this. Let's counter with that. And that made a big difference because it gave, we, we, were, we knew what was coming and we were able to execute that. And that's what we had been prepping for the past two days in practice. And we, I wanted to be extra patient, uh, especially in the second half and really work the shot clock. And, uh, trying and, and limit that because they were shooting close to 50%. So um, I, honestly, we didn't talk about that pressure. We talked about how to execute offensively what they're going to do. Okay, now if there's a two on one, what do, what should we do? We talked about if there's a three on two, what should we do? If we get an offensive rebound, what should we do? So we were talking more situations than anything else than hollering about, hey, they cut the lead, we got to do this. Come on, finish. Any more cliches. We were very precise in our delivery of what we needed to run offensively and what we were going to do in specific situations. You mentioned the emails and support you received and you're trying to convey that to the team and the practice and film and all that. I guess, you know, from an emotional standpoint, how can you continue to build off of today, you know, moving forward? Because Ken had mentioned that this team's still looking for it, it, Every Every day is a new day. Okay, uh, every day is a new day, and as silly as it sounds to say, because one, I'm avoiding every day that comes, I'm avoiding an injury. Okay, uh, but in every day that comes, I have an injured kid one day closer to getting to become healthier. Um, and then one more day, each day we have, we're getting uh, better at adapting to our new style. Uh, in one more day of staying, staying positive with what, is, what has happened, and one more day to receive those. Uh, emails to talk about that. So uh, there's uh, there's still a lot of positive energy uh, within our program, and, and that's important. And um, I, I'll tell you a story. As as fun as those emails are to get, the first couple I got, I was kind of mad because they were so supportive and said, "We're just so proud of your kids trying and working so hard." And I had to take a step back and said, "Well, the boy, great. We're always going to work hard. 
we're always going to try. We're always going to give our best. That's that's what our nature is. That's the kids that we crew. That's the staff we put together. And then I took another step back after that and said, listen, this is don't be don't be silly. Don't be mad about these emails. Be excited. And then I've shared so many of them with, with our kids and, and talked about that positive energy. And, that, and that's really that's, that that's helped uh, when you realize that that others are thinking about you. And uh, but don't get me wrong. No no one is uh, gonna feel sorry for us. Uh, I'm not feeling sorry for us, and nor is this team feeling sorry for anybody else. It's uh, a, a season of injuries for sure. But it's a season of opportunity. Who's going to step up? And I feel like we've had multiple kids step up, and we've had our fans step up to a, to another level. And it's all about giving each other that positive support. And I've, I've been really fortunate to see that from our community, and our, our kids have felt that from ever ever since that things that started uh, injury wise have happened. Um, coach, building a big lead and then having that cut later on in the second half is, has kind of been a reoccurring theme throughout the season. So, what does your team need to do to avoid that? Well, when we've had leads in games, unfortunately, the leads that we've had uh, have um, been eaten away at, in particular games because of the injuries. And it's been an emotional moment. Uh, I'll give you an example of Loyola Marymount. We had a double-digit lead. We lost two kids from the last 10-minute mark to the, zero, from, to the final buzzer, uh, yet we have a shot at the, at the horn to win it. Okay? But we lost two starters due to injury in, in that game. Uh, then at Illinois State, we have a large lead. We're on the road. Uh, it's our second to last game before Christmas break, and we lose two kids in that game. And they cut it. Now we've made the shot that sealed, sealed the victory. We win by, I think, four. Uh, so we've had been able to have leads, and I feel something has happened. An emotional moment has happened. Uh, but going through those moments has helped us today realize, hey, no one else got hurt. And hey, guess what? We're going to talk about execution. We're not going to lose our mind about frantic yelling, do, going back and forth. We've got to do, come on, come on, come on. They're playing tougher or anything like that. It, no, keep it simple. We're going to talk about execution and what we want to do because we, we learned from those, those other moments previously. Can you, I'm sorry, we've got a couple more. Yep, go ahead. Talk a little bit about Sarah Bear getting her first college start. What went into the decision? How she did play? Uh, as I said, Jessica Ruffright is is six two, um, uh, a fantastic post player for them down low, and we wanted to go with a uh, more traditional post lineup uh, defensively against her. Uh, as I said, that kid's averaging between 19 and 22 minutes a game. So when they countered, uh, when they went big, we went with a bigger lineup defensively. Um, and there's games where we can do that, and there's games where we can't do that. So we, we wanted to come out today and do that. But again, they, they were taller than us in one through five, every position. So uh, we, we, knew, we had to pick our poison a little bit with how we wanted to attack some defensive matchups and what we wanted to do because now the majority of time since our entire front court except one has been um, depleted, uh, we are going with five guards. So today we, have, we came out um, uh, with four guards and, and one, one post and I thought Sarah did a good job on, on rough right and got a couple uh, buckets of ball and was, was a good spark for us. Can you talk a little bit about her development over the course of the season thus far? I mean, she's been thrown to the fire, hasn't she? She has, as well as everybody else, you know, and, and as well as our staff trying to, to learn a new system um, that we're implementing where it's not our, our traditional Wall Street offense that, that we've run in, in the past. So everybody's learning every day, and we talk in practice, not don't. Don't just know what the five does. Don't just know what the four does, okay? Know what the spot on the floor does because you don't know. You could be doing, I mean, we're one injury away from this person doing this and one person doing that and moving on, or we're one one time away from uh, somebody getting maybe healthy or and now rotating around, around again. So we talk about learn, learning spots as opposed to position because you're going to play every spot on the floor for the remainder of the season. I think they bought into to that. Uh, don't get me wrong; it's been hard <laughs> uh, to learn to learn that and try and figure out what we want to uh, uh, run at, at both ends with, with different lineups. But our, our kids have been really positive with it so far. And also, my apologies for having been away. Can you update us on the Jasmine Panthers? 
Jasmine, well, first of all, uh, really good news. Uh, she is a graduate student, so she's starting graduate school classes for the second semester and really excited for her. Uh, it's a great opportunity to continue to, to gain uh, her education here. Graduated, I mean, yet another kid who's graduated early and uh, it's really tough to do. Uh, but that's a kid, she's uh, still day to day and uh, she's got good days, bad days with her leg injury. Uh, she's still receiving some treatment from um, our um, team physicians, and I talk to her every day and say, hey, what, do you want to you try it today or do you not want to try it today? And she'll gauge how her pain is, and uh, some days uh, the pain is less than others, and when that day happens, she gets minutes, and when there's a day where I'm kind of like, hmm, it, it looks like she's hobbling some, uh, I understand that it may not be that, that day, but... Um, I, there's a really, really good chance that I think we're going to get some uh, minutes out of here 